Hello, hello, hello. God bless you all. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, I want to thank our senior pastors, as always, for the privilege to bring the Word of God. Every time we have the privilege to bring the Word of God, we do what we need to do as human beings. But who knows that the Holy Spirit takes over? It's always His call, it's always His shot, right? However, He takes it, He takes it. And we want to be in that place whereby we never, dep we never predict God. He just allow him to move. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship and adore you. Lord, we exalt your majesty. We magnify you. We lift you up, oh God. We say there's no one like unto you, oh God. We magnify your holy name. Jesus Christ, you said, if you be lifted up, you will draw men unto you. We lift you up in this place today. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. Holy Spirit, this is your hour. We ask you that you do that which only you can do. You are the presence of the Lord in the church. We we ask you that you do that which only you can do right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, there's no, there's no limit, oh God, that we put around even the move of God in this place, oh God. We ask you to move however you want to move, oh God. We ask you to do that which you want to do, oh God. We ask you to reveal Jesus to us in a new way, oh God. We ask you to speak to our hearts, oh God. Let every shackle and every chain be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every dead altar become alive. Every prayer altar that is cold, let it become alive in the name of Jesus. Every prayer altar that is cold, let it become alive in the name of Jesus. Let there be a quickening of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a quickening of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a quickening of the Holy Spirit. I want you to pray for yourself. Holy Spirit, quicken me on the inside. Yeah, quicken my heart, quicken my senses, oh God. Holy Spirit of God. Quicken me on the inside in the name of Jesus. Le braseketa ye krora rara ba shekete ya. Eh le bosoko to ye krere rara. Eh le braseketa ya. Le bosoko to ya. We send the word of the Lord over the church in America. Eh ma le bosoko. Satan, we say the church of Jesus Christ is marching on, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Le braseketa ye krora rara rara rara. Le bosoko. Ah, we prophesy to the church to arise, arise out of fear, arise out of obscurity in the name of Jesus Christ. Be bold, be courageous in the name of Jesus Christ. Lebra sekete ya kraka labro sokoto ya. Lebra sekete ya. Lord, you said in your word that wherever the soles of our feet shall tread upon, you have given to us as a possession. This place is holy ground. And Lord, we stand using this place as a point of contact to every nook and cranny of America. We speak to the soul of this nation. We speak to the destiny of this nation. Hey, the freedom that God gave this nation. That the name of Jesus will be magnified. That the name of Jesus will be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we lift Jesus up in this nation. Hey, we silence voices. Bakikali brosokoto ya. Ay, 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 bali brosokoto ya. Hey, le brosokoto ya. Hey, libra sakata ya. Every demonic voice speaking against the destiny of this nation. In the name of Jesus, we silence you. Right now, we muzzle you. Every demon on assignment against the soul of this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against you. We muzzle you. Bale brasekata ya. Hey, hey. Let the blood of Jesus wash over America. 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 Arise, oh God. Arise, oh God. And let your enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Hey! 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 Lebra secete ya. Ah, your word says, oh God, that in gathering they shall gather, but not by you. Every gathering together against the soul of this nation, against the destiny of this nation, let such gatherings be scattered in the name of Jesus. Hey! Hey! Mila bra 
Seketeya. Hey! Rege Libra Seketeya Calabra Sokotoya. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of the Lamb is against you. In the name of Jesus, you will take your hands off this nation. You will take your hands off this nation. You will take your hands off this nation. Ah, the hearts of men and women will turn to God. There will be revival in the land. There will be revival in the land. There will be revival in the land. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Rekali brosokotoya. Hele brosokotoya. Kradadadabaseketeya. Lord, we call in the harvest of prayers that have been prayed over this nation. We call in harvest in the name of Jesus. Satan, you will no longer run rampage. Let prayer warriors arise. Hey! From the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let prayer warriors arise all over America. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey! Hey! Nikalibro Sokotoya. Principalities and power sitting all over the states in this nation. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of the Lamb is against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey! Rekela. Yes! Let the angels of the Lord be dispatched. Hey! Rega Libra Sakata Ya Grega. Lebra Sekete Ya. Everyone that has been tongue tied. Me Lebra Sekete Ya. Praying in the spirit. Everyone that has not prayed for a long time in the spirit. That has been tongue tied in their homes. In their lives, Lord. Let there be a revival in every heart of every believer in this nation. Let this revival start. And let this revival spread across the world. In the name of Jesus, oh God. For the harvest of souls in these end times in the name of Jesus we speak to your pride the prince of darkness over America we speak to your pride we come against your pride in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you say you bring this nation down we come against your pride. Your principalities and powers unleashed over America. We come against your pride in the name of Jesus Christ. Nikrabasa. Rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. We come against your pride in the name of Jesus. You will lose America and let her go. You will lose America and let her go. In the name of Jesus, let a seed speak for her. Let a seed be a memorial. Let a seed come up as a memorial, my God. Let a seed speak for her. Let the blood of Jesus Speak for her, oh God. Let the blood of Jesus speak for America. Inakura basakata ya neko shata ya krada boshata leka yeke riara kasakata. You foul spirit behind coronavirus. We come against you as members of the body of Christ. The Bible says for this reason the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of darkness. Coronavirus, you are a work of darkness. We judge you by the power in the name of Jesus. We judge you by the blood of the lamb. We break your hold in the name of Jesus. We arrest you right now in the name of Jesus. Libra seketa yabras. Libra seketa ya grada bashata. Libra shakata ya. Libra seketa ya. Let the presence of the Lord go forth like a wildfire into hospital rooms and turn people loose and release people from their shackles and chains in the name of Jesus. Hey! Reba libra sakata ya. Libro sokoto ye. Nigaria libro sokoto ya. Hmm. Let every harassment of the enemy 
cease in the name of Jesus. In the lives of the children of God. Every harassment. Every harassment of the enemy. Cease in the name of Jesus. We are a holy nation. A royal priesthood. Let the children of God wake up to their inheritance. Let the children of God wake up to their inheritance. Let the children of God wake up to their inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus. All over this nation. All over this world. Let the children of God wake up to their inheritance. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Let there be an outpouring. In our land. In our homes. In our cities. In our counties. In our states. In our nations. Let there be an outpouring. Say in the last days. You're going to pour out your spirit upon our sons and our daughters. There will be visions. There will be dreams. Let there be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Every spirit of depression we come against you. We come against you right now. Every spirit of confusion we come against you right now. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of hopelessness. We come against you right now. In the name of Jesus. Every blood sucking demon. You are bound in the name of Jesus. Every blood sucking demon. You are bound in the name of Jesus. Let a spirit of conviction go forth. Spirit of conviction. Let every limit be broken off in the name of Jesus. Let every limit be broken off in the name of Jesus. Let every limit be broken off in the name of Jesus. Let every limit be broken off in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Mila bra seketa ya. Lika kilo brosokoto ya. Hey! Hey! Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn on every altar. On every pulpit. In every church, every denomination. Let there be a visitation of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let bra seketa ya. Let limits be off. In the name Jesus, we bind the spirit of religion in the name of Jesus. Let limits be off in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, Lebra Sakataya, Rega Lebra Sakataya, Rega Lebra Zagata Yaga Labra. Hey, hey, Hilakashta. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit destroy every yoke. It says, by the reason of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Every spirit stealing marriages, every spirit stealing children, we come against you. Every spirit stealing babies, we come against you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus against you. We stand in our authority in Christ Jesus. We bind you right now. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Every bill, every law that is anti God. In the name of Jesus, we come against you. By the power in the name of Jesus. Let every ungodly counsel be rooted out in the name of Jesus. Bakia, bulo bakika tu ba ila kalibro 
sokotaya ele bakati ya krera na basakata ya ele brasikata ye geli brashan kataya hey hila brasakata ya Holy Spirit arise upon this generation arise oh god upon this generation we snatch this generation from the hand of the enemy we snatch this generation from the hand of the enemy we snatch this generation from the hand of the enemy let there be a revival in the name of jesus in this generation in our youths let there be a revival turn the hearts of fathers to their sons the hearts of sons to their fathers the hearts of children to their parents in the name of jesus ni kabali prosota ya shikara ba soto ye krada he na krada da 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 ba sikata ye krede de 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 bu soto ya ne ke le pro soto ya we come against the spirit of suicide we come against you right now we bind you we break your hold in the church of Jesus Christ we break your hold in the lives of God's people We speak encouragement to every pastor on the edge. Pakaba kola pakaskata. Le pakaskata ya. Let the spirit of rescue go forth. Let the spirit of rescue go forth and rescue people from taking their lives. Hi. No more losses in the body of Christ. Ni mashakata ya. No more pastors taking their lives, Lord. Regali bra sakata ya gara. Hey! Regali bra ba 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 ye ge ge le bra ba 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 sakata ya. Hey le bra ze ge te ya gara la. Hi regala bra sakata. Hi. In the name of Jesus. Now we arrest that spirit of hopelessness. We arrest it right now. We ask that help will reach those who are on the edge those who are on the verge of taking their lives we ask oh god that help will reach them and reach them speedily in the name of jesus and reach them speedily pray with me in the spirit and reach them speedily ma yeka le brasa e le brasa kete ya grada na ba shakata ya regala ba le ga le brasa koto ya and reach them speedily in the name of jesus and reach them speedily in the name of yeshua ah holy spirit we thank you i think i'm just angry at the enemy because he messed with my stuff This church has been called for such a time as this. And I want to cover you all in the blood of Jesus. I want to cover you all in the blood of Jesus. I draw the blood line around you. That you'll be able to to stand in the name of Jesus Christ. that prayer will not cease in this household that the move of the spirit will increase in this house that fresh revelations will flow in this house that the purpose of god for which he brought you out 
out of your trials, out of your tribulations, out of your tests, out of your pain, out of your hurts, the purpose for which he brought you out will be fulfilled. That the Lord will cover you in the days of battle. We cover you in the blood of Jesus. I, I prepared. I prepared. Masikataya. Rabababaya. Rabababa. Rabababababa. Skataya galabra. Sakataya gariara. Hilabra sekataya galibra sakataya. Leave on the keyboard. My lebra secata ya cradadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
Wisdom. Don't forget that word. Ask for that wisdom. You may not need it now. You may need it in eight months' time. But that wisdom is your word. He says, ask for it like you will ask your mom and say, hey, mom, may I have this or whatever. You don't think about it twice. He says, ask for that wisdom. He says, it's within your reach like that. Ask for that wisdom. And that second guessing, that whatever it may be, will just be a shadow. It will pass up and you will see clearly. Your path will be, there will be a lamp, there will be a light. Wisdom. Is that okay? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to touch on one or two things. When are we supposed to close, Pastor? 7 30, 30? Or when? When Pastor Troy was preaching on Sunday, he was preaching about the power of the word. And when I, I knew I was going to um, share the word of God tonight, I went into prayer. And really, there was a day I received a message. You know when you receive this message and you feel like the whole world needs to hear it. That was the way I received that message. So I was like, okay, maybe this is the time to preach that message. And when I opened that message, no. The moment I read the first paragraph, the Lord said, no, 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 no. Not for tonight. So I don't know what that message is for, but he said, it's not for tonight. And the Lord spoke some words into my heart. And I'm praying. When Pastor Lori came up here today, she was saying something about give us a word. Give us a word. I'm praying. My prayer is that everyone will go away with something that will ignite your life. You see, this church, the, the word ignite is not an accident. It's not an accident. So I am praying that something will be ignited in the heart of everyone tonight that will take us to another level. Do you know that there are more levels to reaching God? I've been born again for, a, for many years, but there are still many levels that I need to attain to. There are many levels I'm reaching onto that I'm like, Lord, take me from this level to a higher level. Take me from this level. It's not just in preaching. It's not just in, in ministering. I'm talking about even in loving, even in, in, in any area of my life. Take me to another level. And my prayer is that we will not remain the same tonight. I heard these words in my spirit. Faith, your faith, the word and prayer. Your faith, the word and prayer. Where's your faith anchored? The young lady we just prayed for, you witnessed her do some stuff here. And when you see people like that, sometimes you're like, oh, wow, she's so powerful. She, yes, and yes, everyone is. When you see Megan leading worship, and we, we, we get enraptured sometimes, and you're like, oh, wow, I wish I could sing like that. Oh, I, oh wow, there's the anointing of the Holy Spirit here. When Pastor Michelle leads prayer, you're, you're like, wow. And she's crying because she, her heart is so tender. When you look at all those things, you ask yourself, is there more? There is more. Say, there is more. There is more. Where is your faith anchored? Do you know that the enemy is only after one thing? If he attacks your job, if he attacks your health, if he attacks your finances, it's not after all those things. Is after only one thing. What is it? Your faith. Have you ever encountered people who would go through stuff and they'll say, I don't know if there is God. I've, no, have you met people like that? I, I know people like that. And it's not because they're bad people. Like a trial came and shook them to the very core. And they're like, is there God? Is there a God? Is God alive? If he's alive, why, why, why was my prayer not answered? Have you ever encountered that before? Have you ever gone through trials yourself? Whether you begin to, like, okay, are you hearing me? Have you ever gone through some trials? You all went through that situation with your baby. You were praying. You went to revival. You went to places. You wanted that baby. I mean, have, have you ever encountered things like that? Have you been praying for something for so long? And that thing has remained the same. It has not shifted in the realm of the physical. Because the fact that it has, it has not shifted in the realm of the physical does not mean it's not shifting in the realm of the spirit. 
I'm going to say that again. The fact that what you're praying about has not shifted, has not moved, remains the same before your physical eyes does not mean that it's not shifting in the realm of the spirit. But this is what the enemy tries to do. He knows that every time you get into the word, every time you get into prayer, he knows that you're moving things in the realm of the spirit, even though you can't see it in the physical. So what will he do? He will try to steal your faith so that that purpose can be aborted before you receive your blessings. So that before you receive your blessing, whatever you're praying for, before it manifests in the physical, the enemy will come and attack your faith. He knows that he can, if he can shift you from your platform of faith, he has shifted you from victory. He knows that. And when Jesus Christ was leaving, he didn't say, when I come, will I find believers? When I come, will I find tongue talkers? See what he says in Luke 18, 8. He says, nevertheless, I tell you that no, verse 8, verse 18, 8, yeah. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? One thing the enemy is after is to steal your faith because once he knows that once he steals your faith, he can kill and he can destroy. He can kill and he can destroy. So, <laughs> this is what I told my When I was studying the word of God and I was preparing for this message, this came to me. The devil literally asked for Peter, pastor. Imagine the enemy going to ask for someone like that guy, I want to deal with him. Give me permission to deal with him. Simon Peter, Luke 22. Luke 22, 31 to 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, this is what got me. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. I'm going to pause there. Sift. Look at that word, sift. I looked for the uh, dictionary uh, translations of, 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 of sift. It says, to sieve, to strain, to screen, to filter, to riddle, to purify, to refine, to look through. Satan asked to sift Peter. <laughs> This is where I, I, I was like, okay, this is getting deep. He says, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Please, have you, when you, when, if you have ever read that scripture, have you ever stopped to ask yourself, why did Jesus pray that Peter's faith should not fail? Why didn't he pray that the devil should not sift Peter? Are you catching what I'm saying? Why did Jesus pray that Peter's faith should not fail. Why didn't he pray that, uh-uh, devil, don't touch. Don't touch Peter. Why didn't Jesus say, uh-uh, no, 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 you cannot. No, I love Peter. Peter is my body. No, 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 no. It's my body, body. No, you cannot touch Peter. No, don't touch him. No, no, no. Because sometimes when believers go through stuff, we wonder, where is God? We wonder, are you even there? Are you listening to me? Have you abandoned me? What is going on? He says, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So if you're going through anything right now, Jesus Christ is at the right hand side of, uh, right hand of the Almighty God and is making intercession for you that your faith will not fail. He says, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome. I have overcome the world. He did not ask for Peter not to be sifted. No. He says that your faith will not fail. Are you being sifted? Or are you about to be sifted? It can come through anything. As we're all sitting here right now, there are things people are praying for. Maybe you're believing God for something. It may not even be for you. It may be for your daughter. It may be for your son. It may be for, for yourself. There's something. Maybe you're believing God even for a healing. There's something. And to you, that thing is like a trial. Like, ah, ah. 
When are you going to answer this girl and she will get married? When are you going to answer this boy and he will get married? When are you going to answer? No, no, no. When will the answers come? All the enemy is doing is trying to steal your faith. And if your faith is the most important thing to you in your Christian walk, if you were the devil, what would you do? You will steal it. But when we mention faith sometimes, it looks like a big word. Like a big word. What is faith? In my own layman's term, simple person's definition, faith is simply believing God's word. Believing what God says. As simple as that. Believing what God says. Agreeing with God. If God says you are healed, then you are healed. You come in agreement with that. You say, oh, but I say I'm healed, but I don't see the healing. Uh -uh. You stand there until that healing manifests. That is faith. Faith says I am the head and not the tail. And you keep saying you are the head and not the tail, but you keep failing, but you keep doing what you need to do. You study hard, but you keep declaring I am the head and not the tail. Not because I want to say it, but because the word of God says it, and I agree with the word of God. I am the head and not the tail. I have the wisdom of God. And boom, everything that was like a riddle becomes plain. You're sick in your body. And the Bible says by his stripes you're healed. And you're declaring it. You're breaking bread. But you're not healed. You're not experiencing that healing in the physical. No, you stand there. You stand your ground. You pray until something happens. You believe the word of God until something happens. You stand, you hold on to your faith because it is your currency. If you go to the store, and you buy stuff and you come to the counter and you say oh yeah I want all of that I say okay do you want to pay by cash or by card I say I'm paying by none <laughs> I'm just taking this home what would they do Pastor Michelle what would you do if it was your store everything is that the person comes to the counter and has taken all of this and say okay okay you rang everything and the person is like, so it's time to pay say, oh no I'm not paying oh uh, okay I'm just going to take them home you're going to call the cops at some point. No. Excuse me, ma'am. That would amount to stealing because that's not yours. That's not yours. If you don't pay for it, you don't come into ownership of it. When you pay for it, then you come into ownership of it. Faith is your currency. But the moment I pay, either by card or by cash, those things are mine, right? Faith is your currency. Faith is your currency and without faith it is impossible to please God. You want to please God without faith it is impossible to please God. How does faith come? By the word of God. By the word. Hearing the word. Studying the word. So if you were the devil what would you do? If you know that faith is the currency that this person needs to, to, to survive on earth. Faith is the currency that this person needs to be connected to God. If you were the devil, what would you do? And you know that that faith only comes by the word. What would you do? Talk to me. You keep the person from studying the word. You keep the person from studying the word. The, studying the word becomes like a, a, a chore, like a mechanical thing that you have to do. Let me tell you something. The enemy will not come if you're not a drinker or a drunkard or a drunk. The enemy will not tempt you with what you are not. If you're not, not a drug addict, you've never dealt with drugs. The enemy will not tempt you with drugs. Please. If you've never dealt with lust, the enemy will not tempt you with that. It's little, little things. Little foxes that spoil the vine. If you were the devil, you would keep the person from studying the word. Pastor Troy said something and he made an illustration with guns last, like, uh, this past Sunday. I went home and we, we began to talk about it. Because we will share and all of that stuff. There are people who will go to bed and sleep well because they have a loaded gun by their bedside. And they know that anyone comes and messes with their home, they're going to shoot the person. Am I, am I lying? But they will go to bed in peace because they, they believe they have a protection, right? And he was, he was trying to just 
describe that with the word that believers have the word of God which is our weapon but we never get into it but that is how your faith gets built though do you see how easy it is to sit down with a TV show that has different episodes and you're watching episode upon episode upon episode upon episode, upon episode and hours you started at 2 by the time you look at oh it's time for dinner oh my gosh it's 6 p.m. oh I didn't even realize that but when you want to study the word your eyes are heavy all of a sudden you want to sleep has it happened to you before because it's happened to me before many times even but why though because the enemy knows that that's where power lies I was telling somebody something today I said let me tell you something salvation is cheap but walking with God will cost you salvation is free sorry it's free but walking with God will cost you walking with God will cost you it will cost you it will cost you your comfort the Lord wants us to get into the word so that we can be able to stand let me tell you something evil days are coming ahead are coming ahead on the world you must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might you must get into the word of God it's very important for you to get into the word of God you cannot live a life of holiness if you don't know what the word of God says in, 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 about it you cannot live a life of faith if you don't know what the word of God says about it there was a time in my life when I used to binge watch but my spirit was crying out Pastor Laurie I just wanted to be used by God but I could watch movies from morning till night I was not married I was not working I was a student so once we came home from from, from, from campus I would just be binge watching but my, my spirit would be yearning to be, to be used by God and I would be crying hypocrite <laughs> And one day the Lord said it will cost you it will cost you killing your flesh it will cost you you cannot sleep at 2 a.m. and want to wake up at 5 a.m. to pray Tony no it's not gonna be possible it will cost you so what am I gonna do you know what to do everyone say grace and he gave me the grace that desire left me and I was able to sleep on time wake up on time to pray and I developed a prayer life that has not been shaken ever since that time but it took a decision to get into the word because the enemy will come it will come to test everything it will come to test your faith and if your faith is not built on a solid ground you will fall flat on your face I tell you people you I mean you can read things do, do you see people falling around you no do you see people falling I don't have to mention names do you see people falling and you're wondering why how come two things the word and prayer you cannot pray effectively if you don't know the word I believe the Lord wants this to be heard again because pastor preached it on Sunday believe me I had no idea I was going to preach this until the Lord it just quickened me he said no this is what you're going to say again people have to get into the word oh I still watch TV but let me tell you it doesn't watch me it doesn't have me it doesn't own me do you see the difference it doesn't own me we must get into the word we want to be used how many people want to be used by God I want to be used by God Pastor Lori said this is the greater works generation and I believe that we are the greater works generation and when my husband was preaching the other say, the, uh, day he was saying that we are not even doing what Jesus did how much more greater works you know the reason why we are not paying the price it's called consecration you are already dreaming of what you are going to eat in the morning and the Lord says go into a three day fast and you are like what what, what, what because he knows that once you go into that fast your flesh will come under and you can hear God clearly when you mention fast a lot of people want to just bow through the door if you want God to use you we're not talking about being on TV that's not what we're even talking about we're not even talking about holding the microphone I'm talking about you go to work or you are at, uh, at Costco or you are at wherever and somebody faints in front of you and that person maybe just goes out cold and everybody
God is, oh my God, the person is dead, the person is dead. And they feel the person's pause. They feel the pause and the pause is gone. The person is dead. And you're like, excuse me, may I just pray for the person? And you lay your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up. And the person, <laughs> and just rises up. In the day of social media, where they're, everybody's recording everything, do you know how viral that would go? Some people will even say you stage it. They'll say, oh no, it was staged. But if we don't pay the price, we cannot experience these things. Somebody comes around you or somebody walks with you and you know that person is bound in a lifestyle and you know it's a, it's a bondage to them. And just by coming around you because of the presence of God that oozes around you. Because you know what? If they could throw a dead body into the grave of Elisha and that anointing could raise that dead body how much more we that are alive and we have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us I believe miracles are supposed to be happening around us I believe people are supposed to be dropping to their knees giving their lives to Christ I believe people are supposed to be crying weeping for conviction I believe it I believe people are supposed to be healed I believe people are supposed to just be rising up and be not knowing what is going on because why somebody who carries the anointing has just walked through has just walked through and the enemy will come to steal your faith he will do it by stealing the very thing that feeds your faith what feeds your faith is the word of God what expresses that faith is prayer it will come at you when you're supposed to wake up some people say I pray, I just pray when I get into the car I just pray, there's nothing wrong. I pray in the car all the time, but I'm talking about do you have a place do you have a place whereby a time whereby you go before the Lord you have a, it's an intimate time between you and God do you know that <laughs> when you start your day with God even when you face challenges you will be okay am I right you will be okay because you would have received strength in the morning the psalmist says in Psalm 63 verse 1 Psalm 63 verse 1 the psalmist says oh God you are my God early will I seek you early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you my fl flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water my soul longs for you my flesh thirsts for you my flesh does your flesh I want to ask you does your flesh does it long for God does your soul thirst for him these are the questions he wants me to ask us tonight and I ask myself the same thing is my soul thirsty enough for Jesus Christ what is your soul thirsty for when you wake up in the morning what is the first thing you reach out to what is your flesh longing for what is your soul thirsty for entertainment what is your soul thirsty for what is your flesh he says early will I seek you and you wonder why David was so close to God he sought him early before everybody woke up do you know that if you don't seek the Lord your sensitivity will be dulled what do I mean by that if you do anything wrong you will not feel convicted in your heart why? Your sensitivity is dulled. If you're watching certain things and you know if your pastor was to be sitting beside you, you will not watch it. But you're watching it, you're comfortable with it. And nothing shakes you. Ah! You need to rededicate your life. I tell my son, whatever you will not watch if mommy and daddy were sitting beside you you are not supposed to be watching it period I tell my children that whatever you know that if your mom and your dad were sitting beside you they are raising you in the ways of the Lord and you know that if they were sitting beside you what you are watching they will not approve of it you are not supposed to watch it when they are not even there 
because it dulls your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and the enemy knows that once your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is dulled he, God wants to bless you you can't hear temptation is in front of you you can't see trial is coming you can't hear there's a trap in front of you you can't see why your sensitivity is dulled dulled you can't hear you can't see but when you stay in the place of prayer you say oh no I, I'm, I don't drink I'm just a social drinker like Pastor Troy would say suck your toes or whatever I don't know how Pastor would say suck your toes I mean that thing is so funny he said, sucking your to toes it may not be for anybody here it may be for somebody who is watching because sometimes we go around these things you see and people don't get helped Somebody says, I'm a social drinker. There's no place in the Bible that says we should not drink. Even Jesus turned water into wine. And the enemy is, is waiting. <laughs> He's waiting for the appointed time. Where he will use the same thing to enter. <laughs> to enter in and cause chaos in somebody's life. I read the story of a man. This just happened a couple of years ago. I remember when I went to get my certification, it was honored and all of that stuff. Church, big and all of that stuff. And of course, it's lost everything now. Because of alcohol. But when I hear that, what comes to my mind is not judgment. Never judgment. I was asking myself, did not have people around him then I went to read the whole story and the guy said he just used to drink just mm, not because there are lots of Christians that drink because it's not a sin I don't know why I'm going there but the day trouble came knocking the day trouble came knocking he said he called for people there were, nobody was there maybe people were too busy to pick up their calls and the bar answered a bar was open and that bar answered and he went in and drank and drank and became drunk went back again because this problem was not going and drank to drown his sorrow I want to ask you a question if he was never a social drinker would he be tempted by the bar? no that's what we're talking about he will not be tempted by the bar. And the enemy followed him until he lost everything he ever worked for. From, I'm just a social drinker. I don't get drunk. The devil is a patient devil. Many believers are impatient. Even me, I'm working on my patience. Many believers are impatient. But the devil is a patient devil. He will wait and wait and wait until, the, until an opportune time. That man lost everything. I watched somebody, I mean, I, the first time I met this person was at the top. And two years later, on the ground, I was like, is this the way the devil can wreck somebody's life? Little foxes. But what if you had a devotional life in the morning? You go before the Lord. You reflect. You pray. And the Lord is like, Tony, the way you talked yesterday, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, Tony, the way you did it, oh, I'm so sorry. Father, I want to thank you. I love you. No. In, in that place, you've received strength. You've repented of your sins. You're, you're, you've received encouragement. You've received all the grace that you need and you're ready for the day. When the enemy comes knocking, would you recognize him or not? Yes! Do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ People think that Jesus Christ just came on this earth and nothing, nothing was impossible for him. Yes. But do you know that Jesus Christ had to? <laughs> he, had, he literally had to follow his father. He literally had to follow what God was telling him. We have scriptures where the Bible would say that he rose very early in the morning and he went to a solitary place to pray. He rose. That's an action. So that means when he was in the morning, he rose. He got up from his bed. Say, get up. Get up. 
Sometimes you want to lay in bed. Oh, da, 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 and the devil is sitting there and saying, oh, wow. Keep on, keep on, keep on. He got up. He went into a solitary place to pray. He got up. He got up. Get up from your bed. There are times I have to tell my body. I said, Tony, get up. I talk to myself like that. I said, Tony, get up. Jesus is waiting downstairs. I said, get up. It's time to pray. He said, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you right now. I, I talk to myself like that. Because when I wake up at 5 a.m., before I used to wake up at 4.30, but now 5 a.m. because my daughter drives, I wake up at 5 a.m., I don't want to get up from the bed. This body doesn't want to get up because this body has worked hard and doesn't want to get up from the bed. And I begin to talk to this body. I said, because the spirit is what is controlling the body. I refuse to let my body control my spirit. Uh-uh. To control my flesh. No, no. I told you, Tony, the spirit being, the spirit man, the Holy Ghost on the inside of me, I made up my mind, is the one that will control this flesh. I said, get up now. Maybe my husband has heard me even talking to myself. I said, Jesus is waiting downstairs. So you will go into the bathroom and brush your teeth and you go downstairs and you will pray. Then I get up. Then the sleep flies away. Then I go downstairs and spend the next whatever time. And oh my goodness. What an amazing time. There are people here and there are people watching this. You're struggling in your prayer life. You're struggling in studying the word of God. You say, I don't even understand what this word means. Ask and invite the Holy Spirit. But there's one word I want to leave for you, with you. Plan. Say plan. Those who, who fail to plan, they plan to fail. It's a popular saying. If you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Plan for your devotional time. Plan for it. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that I will be getting up in the morning to pray. I will be getting up in the morning to take charge of my day. I will be getting up in the morning to spend time with the Lord. It may vary from one for maybe pastor may spend like two three hours i may spend like two three hours maybe yours is just 30 minutes maybe yours is even 15 minutes i'm talking about 15 quality time 15 quality minutes 15 quality minutes and you find out that the more you do it the more 15 will become 30 30 will become one hour do you know that peter before he betrayed jesus jesus told them he said watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. So what does that tell us? That the antidote for falling into temptation is watching and prayer. Watching and praying. And if you were the devil, oh, this person is doing too well. <laughs> he's, do, he's doing too well. She's doing too well. And you plan for that person. And if that person is not watching, the person is not praying, boom. The enemy comes through the cracks. Cracks. I don't know why I went to some things. But I believe that there's deliverance for at least one or two people in this place. And one or two people watching me. I'm not kidding. I know what I'm saying. I know it like I know my name. Guess what just happened? This locked itself. It locked itself and it's not coming on. Because the enemy is mad. Let me tell you something. There's deliverance from, for at least one or two people in this place. I know that. And somebody watching me. I'm just hearing the word social drinker in my spirit. I'm hearing it as loud as possible. I'm here. It's like it's, bla it's blaring in my ears. He said, I'm just a social drinker. I'm just a social. And, 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 and it's, it's been impressed upon my heart that that is a bait of the enemy. Stop it. It's a bait of the enemy. The enemy is planning something destructive. Stop it. Please stop it. I, I appeal to you. I'm not kidding. This did not come to me when I was preparing my message. It just came to me while I was here. Don't, don't, don't go their way. Don't go. Don't be pressured into things. It's a bait of the enemy. You're not just a social drinker. It's a trap of the enemy. It is a trap of the enemy. And if you're not studying the word of God, there's no condemnation for you. There is grace. Say grace. 
There is grace. There is no condemnation. Don't beat yourself up. Don't condemn yourself. Don't put yourself down. Receive the grace of God. Say, Lord, I receive your grace. That's it. If you desire to wake up in the morning to pray, you hear people talking about waking up and praying, but you've not been doing it. There is grace. Say, grace is calling you. Let's rise up on our feet. It's calling you. There is grace. It's calling you. I want you to close your eyes and I just want you to begin to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to begin to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's calling you. Grace. There is grace. There is grace. Grace is available. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is available. The Bible says law came through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace is available for you to wake up in the morning and to go before the Lord. Grace is available for you to wake up in the morning and to study the Word of God. Grace is available for you to even study the Word of God before you go and watch all those movies. Grace, you find out that the more you give your appetite to the things of God, the more your appetite to the things of the world will die. The more you give your appetite to the things of God, the more your appetite to the, to the things of, of the world will die. It will just die a natural death. Grace is available. Grace is available. Grace is available. And you want to tap into that grace tonight. You want to tap into that grace tonight. You want that fresh grace tonight. I want you to come forward. There's no shame. You want to tap into that fresh grace tonight. The grace, the grace to study the word of God. The grace to, to go before the Lord in prayer. The grace to, 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 to devote some quality time with the Holy Spirit in the morning. That grace is available. I want you to come forward. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I ain't going to beg. Come forward. Come forward. You want that grace? Come forward. I want you to raise up your hands. Lift up your hands because you're not ashamed to come forward. Let me tell you something. It's going to pour grace onto you like never before. Let me tell you, you're going to begin to hear new songs. You're going to begin to wonder, where did this come from? Because you made yourself available to the Lord. Look at me. I'm glad you came forward. The grace of I spoke to you on Sunday. The call of God upon your life is strong, man. And the enemy is not going to play fair. But this is the time and season for you to build. Troy, look, look at me. This is the time and the season for you to build. To build strong. I was looking, I didn't want to put you on the spot. But I'm so glad you came forward. I wanted you to come forward on your own. I didn't want to call you out. But when I was speaking, you, you, you were in front of me like this. The call of God is upon your life. You said something on Sunday. You said, because obedience is better than sacrifice. God saw that. Remember what I told you on Sunday. Let me tell you something. It's your season to bury yourself in the word of God. You will hear revelations. You will see revelations. Revelations. Make sure, are you a writer? Do you write? Do you journal? I want you to journal. You will begin to hear things. Write them down. They don't have to make sense to you. You write them down. Write them down. Write them down. Do you understand what I'm saying? And let every limitation be off. Because you have a heart that wants to obey God. You have a heart that wants to say yes when you're called upon. Let me tell you something. The Lord will use you. Let your grace, let your grace, pastors, please pray for them. Pastor Michelle, let your grace, Pastor Marvin, Lord, let your grace, let your grace, let your grace flow, oh God. Let your grace, let your grace, Pastor, pa Pastor Michelle, come on. Let your grace, let your grace, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your grace be multiplied upon Megan, oh God. That you take her from one level of glory to another, from one level of grace to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has either to hindered you right now, let it be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every limitation, let it be off in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the strength of the living God. Receive the strength of the Holy Spirit. The strength to run and not be weary. 
the strength to walk and not faint. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the rivers of living water flow out of your belly. Let it flow out of your belly and let it water every area in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the grace of God be, be multiplied. The anointing of God, let it be multiplied in your life. Ah, Megan. Yes, let your grace be multiplied, O oh God. Let your grace be multiplied, O oh God. Let your grace be multiplied, O oh God. Grace be multiplied to keep flesh under. Let your grace, those of you who are in the pew, I want you to pray for yourself. Oh Lord, let your grace be multiplied upon us, O oh God. Let your grace be multiplied in my life, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let your grace be multiplied in our lives, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Grace to overcome every temptation. Grace to overcome every fleshly desire. Let your grace be multiplied in our lives, oh God. Grace, oh God. Grace to wake up early and to pray. Grace to get into the word of God and study. Grace, 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 grace. Let that grace flow in this house, oh God. Let that grace flow in this house, oh God. Let that grace be multiplied in my life, oh God. In our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, to do what you have called us to do, oh God. To obey your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace, oh God. Grace, oh God. Grace. Lord, we receive that grace, grace, oh God, to wake up when the alarm goes off, oh God. Grace, oh God, to wake up when the Holy Spirit wakes us up, oh God, and to pray. Grace, oh God, grace, oh God, grace, oh God, to turn down entertainment, oh God, to study the word. Grace, oh God, to long after you. Grace to thirst after you, oh God. Grace to hunger after you, oh God. Let that grace, oh God, flow upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Grace, oh God, let your grace flow in the name of Jesus, Libra Secretary, Shakataya, and Libra Secretary, Grace multiplied, Grace multiplied in the name of Jesus, 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 Grace multiplied, Grace, Grace.
grace grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that teaches Lord we receive that grace for every member of this house every member of this house everyone watching us Lord we receive the grace of God let it be multiplied upon our lives in the name of Jesus Christ that we will not be weak Christians we will not be weak Christians we will be strong Christians we will be strong Christians we will, we will not faint we will not be weary in the name of Jesus Christ our faith will be built up on a daily basis as we get into the word of God oh self-discipline self-control self-discipline self-control self-discipline self-control receive the grace for self-discipline somebody you need the grace of God for self-control receive the grace of God for self-control self-discipline and self-control in the name of Jesus Christ self-discipline and self-control in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we receive the grace for self-discipline and self-control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh God yes Lord in the name of Jesus Christ the world is waiting for us the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God but it cannot be done outside of the word of God and prayer it cannot be done and you cannot even pray effectively without knowing the word you must get into your word it's a matter of urgency it's a matter of certainty it's a matter of necessity you have to get into your word get into your word plan plan to study the word plan to wake up early and to pray your life may depend on it plan father we give you praise we thank you lord all those that came out you saw their hearts lord because you have something great for them and we pray my god that they will begin to experience even starting from tonight in their own places they will begin to experience it starting from tonight in the name of Jesus and we pray that that grace will rest upon this house that everyone that walks in on our Sunday on, on, during our Sunday services our midweek services that grace will rest upon everyone that grace will rest upon everyone that this body of Christ here will be strong and immovable. No one will fall by the wayside. No household will be weak. In the name of Jesus, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I speak a blessing upon Pastor Levi. Stretch forth your hands towards him. I speak a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. New season, new levels in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to the grace, the grace to flourish in the new level that God is ushering you into. Receive that grace to flourish in the name of Jesus. The grace to flourish financially. The grace to flourish spiritually. The grace to flourish on every side. Let that grace flow in the name of Jesus. You break forth to the left and to the right. Your room is enlarged. Enlargement of rooms in the name of Jesus. Enlargement of rooms. I hear the word make room make room enlargement of rooms in the mighty name of Jesus whether that is physical or spiritual enlargement of rooms make rooms rooms are coming rooms I hear the word rooms in the mighty name of Jesus amen powerful <laughs> you have no idea I say it all the time the anointing cannot be hidden forever if you want God to use you like that you have to make room in your life for him to do it you have to do the day by day line upon line precept upon precept and you need to guard the anointing with everything that you have